Hey everybody, uh, this is Mr. Lee. I am your teacher for Intro to Statistics, uh, Math 152, uh, this summer, uh, year 2021. Um, I am coming to you from my uh, bedroom here because uh, we are uh, still in a pandemic. Um, we don't necessarily have the access to the physical campus uh, like we normally would. Uh, but I wanted to take a second and tell you that uh, your success is still very important to us and still very important to me. Uh, and we're still offering a lot of support and a lot of uh, help to be successful in this class. Um, so I want to take a little bit of time. Uh, this is really going to focus on the policy and procedures of the class. I'm going to try to keep this to about 10 minutes uh, to get you rolling with the course so you can really focus in on the course content. Uh, so I have the syllabus pulled up. I also have our Blackboard page pulled up. Um, let's take a look at the syllabus first, and then we will click around uh, Blackboard. Um, so my name is uh, Mr. Lee, uh, Grady Lee Wilson Withers. Um, my office number is listed here, but I will not be in the office very much. Uh, email is the best way to get in contact with me, and I will work hard to reply to you uh, in a timely manner. Uh, if you want to meet, uh, reach out. We can work something out. Um, we'll talk about the course entry assignment soon. I, you really need to finish that today or tomorrow. Uh, Tuesday, June 22nd is the last day to which you can withdraw. Um, we are using uh, Blackboard and uh, MyOpen Math. Uh, MyOpen Math is actually integrated with Blackboard for this course. There is no separate logon. There's no separate password or enrollment key. You'll access all of your course materials through Blackboard. You will not need to purchase anything. Um, if you want to buy a physical copy of the textbook, you can find them on Amazon. You can usually find a used copy for about $10. Um, but the vast majority of students just use uh, the virtual copy that's included through Blackboard. It is an option out there. Okay, uh, you do need a calculator. I really think having a, a physical uh, calculator uh, makes this course a lot easier. Um, you need something in the TI-83 family. Um, you can shop on eBay and you can find one of these calculators for $20. Um, I know Andrew McKay's, which is the used bookstore in Winston, uh, they sell them. Uh, a lot of the pawn shops in Winston-Salem sell them. Um, you're looking at twenty or forty dollars for one. Uh, you, yeah, I really think it makes your life easier because we use a lot of those calculator commands, and it makes the course a lot harder, a lot more complicated uh, to try to, to do it by hand. Um, so work out. You can. You'll be okay for the first, uh, you know, week, maybe two weeks, uh, but particularly after the first test, you really want to have a calculator, something in the TI eighty three family. Um, if you withdraw from the COREC, you'll be withdrawn from this course, so please don't do that. Uh, the course description and the learning outcomes are included. I will make sure we cover all this. We're using the 10-point grading scale. Let's talk about uh, how uh, your grade for this course will be calculated. And I will uh, open up some assignments just to show you how they work. Uh, here in a minute when we navigate around Blackboard. Um, but there are four exams scattered throughout the semester. Each exam is worth 8%. Um, each exam covers the content we will discuss since the previous exam. So exam four covers everything talked about since exam three. Exam three covers everything since exam two. Uh, your homework grade is a big part of your grade in this course. Uh, it's 40%. Homework is the best predictor of how you will do in the course. Students with really strong homework grades do really well. Students with really weak homework grades really struggle. Uh, you get unlimited attempts until the due date on homework questions. So please take advantage of multiple attempts. Uh, labs are 28%. Everything set up so you get uh, three attempts on a lab with only the last attempt being recorded. All right. Uh, late work. This class moves quickly. We are not together for very long this, this summer. 
I am very hesitant to give extensions because I don't want to see you drown. If you get a few assignments behind, and you know, two days behind in this course is like being a week behind in a 16-week course. Um, I don't want to see you drown. So I'm, I'm always hesitant to give extensions, but if you, if you have something going on, please keep me in the loop. Shoot me an email. Let me know what's going on. Uh, the more I know, the more I can work with you. Um, so keep me in the loop. I want to see you be successful. I want to see you stay on track. I also want to make sure I'm not putting you in a position where you're going to drown. Um, I do not offer extra credit. Um, there is an attendance policy. If you miss four assignments, you can be withdrawn from the course. Uh, I normally do not withdraw students as long as they have a path to be successful. If you do not have a path to be successful, it is better for you to withdraw than it is for you to stay in the course. Um, so I when a student you know, when a student's missing assignments and doesn't have a path, I, I withdraw them as quickly as I can. Okay. Disability services. Uh, this is info from the dean's office about the advantages and disadvantages to asynchronous courses like this one. At the end of the syllabus, and if you have an, if you have a way to print things, print this page. This tells you what assignment is due on what day. I think that this page is very helpful. You have an assignment due in this course every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, giving you the weekend off. Nothing's due on Friday, nothing's due on Saturday, nothing is due on Sunday. Uh, there's also a couple days off through the semester for holidays. You get some days off around July 4th. So uh, I really encourage you to print this off, and everything's due at 11.55 p.m. Uh, the night that it's due. Uh, really think printing this off makes it easier to keep track of stuff. So uh, we will look back on this a little bit. Let's just, for the sake of this, let's take a look at uh, these assignments just as sort of example assignments in Blackboard. So over in Blackboard, when you open your uh, Blackboard course, you land on coursework. Over here on the left, um, you can view announcements. I'll make sure these announcements are also emailed to you when I have announcements to tell you. Uh, take some time on the Start Here tab. There's a listing for the syllabus. Nice little portrait of me. Some information right here. Uh, a video I made for tips for our, uh, success in online math courses. Some info for a virtual calculator. Uh, the syllabus, the Start Here tab just links you to the syllabus tab. This is the document I was viewing for the first you know, seven minutes of this video. Uh, the course entry assignment, this is very important for you to do. Uh, if you do not complete the course entry assignment, you will be automatically withdrawn. I don't want to see that happen to you. So make sure you complete the course entry assignment. It's a discussion post. It only take you a few minutes. Go ahead and knock it out today. Uh, my contact info is here, some Blackboard tools. The only discussion board is the course entry assignment, campus resources. There's some info here on the Learning Center. The Learning Center is offering free tutoring, free online tutoring. You can do it from your home. You do not have to travel to campus. Um, the, 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 on, the way they're doing video conferencing uh, tutoring has gotten great reviews from students. Uh, students that regularly participate in tutoring on average earn a letter grade better in the course. So please take advantage of tutoring. Uh, grades here, this lets you know where you're standing in the course. Uh, there is a history of these things being displayed wrong in here. Um, I don't have any control over what it displays the due date as in the grade center. Um, I can control what it displays the due date as in the assignment, and I can control the syllabus, but sometimes there's some kind of bug where it's different here than where it's other places. I don't think we have that issue right now. Hopefully it won't be an issue this semester. Okay. Um, so you'll spend the bulk of your time in this course in the coursework tab. There's some information on the text I showed you few minutes ago. You can buy it if you want. Uh, what most students do, the required reading for each topic 
is the text that you need for that topic. So you can just view it virtually right here instead of buying the physical textbook, which is what most students are comfortable doing. Um, I also stuck in a quick reference right here. This is the same pacing guide uh, that you're seeing right here. I think this lays things out a little bit nicer than this big long page right here. Okay, for every topic, uh, there's a required reading. There are videos. There are extra videos. The extra videos I pick out myself, and oftentimes they have a lot of advice for using the calculator. So I think those extra videos are very helpful. Uh, sometimes the extra videos streamline the topic for you a little bit. Uh, for every topic, there is a homework assignment. There is a lab assignment. Just for our example topic, let's look at probability. So here's the required reading. So this is just a chapter from the text. This one's 40 pages long. This is one of the longer ones. Here's videos. Great set of videos right here. Uh, extra videos. Okay, let's take a look at this homework assignment. We'll hit start. This homework assignment is 24 questions long. You can bounce around however you want. Uh, over here, it tells you how many attempts you have. By default, there's 100 attempts per question in the homework. This answer should be wrong, so I'll hit submit. It tells me that I got it wrong. Similar question. You can get a question wrong as many times as you want. When you finally get the question right, you will receive full credit. So there is no penalty for attempting questions and homeworks. So uh, you know, with, with enough support and with enough time, every student can have really strong homework grades. Strong homework grades always translate to strong grades in the class. So make sure you're doing your due diligence. Okay. Let's look at the lab here. Okay, you get three attempts on the lab. Only the highest, uh, excuse me, highest score attempt is recorded. Oh, excuse me, yeah, highest, uh, highest score is recorded. So you can try this lab here. Some of the labs have questions like this problem right here. And this question is worth a little bit more. This is worth 20 points instead of 10 points. This is where I get to see your work. Um, so you'll attach a file right here and uh, submit it. This will not auto-grade because the computer is not smart enough to grade your picture. After the assignment is due, I will sit down and uh, look over your work and give you credit for it. I try to do it the next day. Sometimes things get busy with other obligations at the college and it doesn't happen as, as fast as I want it to. Okay, so labs, you get three attempts. The highest one's recorded. That's not the button I meant to press. Um, and then let's demo. I know I've gone over the time I told you I would, but let's just take a look at the first test. All the tests are set up basically the same. You have a two hour time limit. You'll have a timer in the upper right hand corner. That's two continuous hours. So if you start a test at 8, you have until 10. Sometimes students want to like, sometimes students will work on it for 15 minutes, leave, come back four hours later and don't understand why it's submitted. It's two continuous hours. It'll, so you see the timer up here and then it's, it moves with you as you scroll. Um, you will submit the test all at once at the very end. And this is rolling right now. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine with leaving. So that's the lowdown. Um, please reach out if you have any questions. Uh, please right now go knock out that course entry assignment on Monday. That way we don't have to worry about you being withdrawn. 
and uh, then get rolling with our first topic, which is uh, collecting data. Please reach out to me. Email is the quickest way to get in touch with me if you have any questions or concerns. Thanks.